Hello there, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. This video is part two of, of three videos that I'm doing to spotlight and explain falconers, occipiters, and bootios. And these are not meant to be the end all, everything about these groups of raptors, but these are especially made to help people who are getting into falconry. Because in the United States and many other countries as well, you have to take a falconry exam in order to get a license to keep birds of prey. And one of the things you need to know, even if you don't have to get a license, you really need to know these families. Uh, you need to know the differences because the falcons, the occipiters, and the bootios are the main core of families from which falconry birds are drawn. My first video in that three part was on occipiters. This one is on bootios, the soaring hawks. Now, if you're talking about birds of prey, when you say hawk, most people have seen a hawk or a bird of prey. They don't, may not know what it is. They might think it's a falcon. They might think it's an eagle. But bootios are the big, large, soaring hawks that even people who know nothing about birds see because they're large and they're usually hunting open fields. They're usually in a very prominent and visible spot on top of a tree, on top of a telephone pole, and they're puffed up and they're enormous. In the United States, there's a number of species. The most commonly seen and, and commonly known is the famous red-tailed hawk, which doesn't get its red tail until it's an adult. But there's many others utilized in falconry, but the red tail is the quintessential bootio. It, it fits every description you want to describe. If the peregrine is the quintessential falcon, then the red-tailed hawk is the quintessential bootio. But this is a worldwide audience today. You put a video on YouTube and all over the world, people can see it. And sometimes the common terms we use can be a little confusing. So the term bootio uh, or soaring hawk, we, we, we use this term here in the United States. We'll look at a goshawk and say, that goshawk's a hawk. We'll look at a red-tailed hawk and say, that red-tailed hawk is a hawk. A lot of people uh, from the old world are like, what do you mean? That's a red-tailed hawk buzzard. So this is a very important thing that needs to be brought up. True hawks are the occipiters, which were in video number one. The soaring hawks, the bootios, the rest of the world calls them buzzards. But in the United States, the term buzzard has come to falsely and wrongly be used to mean vultures. For example, a turkey vulture, I've heard people say, oh look, there's a turkey buzzard, boys. Well, no, it's not a buzzard. <laughs> A buzzard is a bootio. I don't know how this misunderstanding happened, but I've got a pretty good guess. Uh, most of the European colonists who came to America were uh, common folk looking for a new life. There wasn't a whole lot of gentry class coming over who were like, yes, I'm part of the aristocracy and I know my falconry birds. It's, it's mostly just hardworking folk trying to start a new life, get some land kind of situation. And so they're not familiar with, with biological nomenclature of the times. And so in European falconry in the old days, buzzards were not flown at all. And for good reason. The point of falconry, whether it was to get food or to show off some flash and dash or just to um, for sport, for entertainment. There was no TV. There was no internet. Whatever the reason... Bootios did not, buzzards, bootios did not fit that bill well because falcons and occipiters had much more flash and dash, much more success, and bootios were just viewed as, as slow, lethargic, unworthy hunting companions. Nothing wrong with them, just let them stay wild. There's no reason to fly them when you could fly a peregrine. That was sort of the idea. And so, because they had sort of a lesser view to them by the falconers of Europe, then buzzard was not a complimentary term. You, were, you could call some a person a buzzard. And so, in America, somehow that got applied to vultures. I, I, it's still so strange to me. Um, if you say buzzard to any American, they picture a vulture. But you say it old world, and they picture a bootio. In America is where bootio, buzzard, falconry really originates. Uh, in, a long time ago, back in the day, over in Asia, you know, they were using a lot of occipiters and eagles. Uh, you know, throughout Europe, there was high emphasis on fancy falcons. And of course, the Middle East 
pioneering falconry with sakers and peregrines. Uh, most parts of the world, old world, were pioneering falconry with every other branch of the family except for buzzards, except for budios. Because they had a rich history of thousands of years, no one ever thought to challenge that or attempt that. Which is a very interesting thing that happened here in the Americas. Because the United States had absolutely no falconry history to speak of, uh, and we only knew of what was happening over in Europe, a lot of pioneers in early falconry, like the Craighead brothers are, are notable, uh, a lot of these young falconers in the early 1900s were just like trying random birds. What was available? What's near your house? There wasn't a, an overlay or a history of use. And in that process, attempts were made to use red-tailed hawks and other bootios as well, like ferruginous hawks, Swainson's hawks, and things of that nature. And it turns out they actually have their place in falconry. Now, I like to explain uh, falcons, occipiters, and bootios in terms of vehicles so people understand, they, they can instantly understand. Think of a Falcon as a high-performance race car. You know, it needs special fuel. It's ridiculously fast. It's always breaking down. It needs a special mechanic and special parts. That's a Falcon. Think of an Occipiter as the Batmobile or some weird James Bond vehicle that's like rawr, rawr, just really nutty in its abilities. And think of a Budio like a red-tailed hawk as a Jeep or a truck. It's tough. It's strong. It's not as fast. It's not as agile as those other vehicles but it's gonna get you where you wanna go and it's gonna get the job done well. So as far as the profile, if you're taking a falconry test and you're looking at the silhouettes, uh, Budios have long wings, broad wings, both. They're very good at soaring and gliding. They do have a long tail, but not disproportionately long like an occipiter. So long wings, broad wings, long tail, that's a Budio. They're built like a like a cinder block they're just they're broad chested everything about them is broad 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 their feet are incredibly thick the legs are thick the toes are thick the talons are thick the toes are not excessively long most budios are hunting mammals they will hunt what they need to they'll go after birds they'll go after you know reptiles and other things but they're primarily hunters of rodents and rabbits which have nasty chisel teeth in front so if you're like i caught a prairie dog and it turns around Arr! and like tries to chomp your toe off the thicker your toe is and the shorter your toe is the more likely you can withstand an injury like that without getting a toe bit off or dying of infection so they have these these sausage feet <laughs> that they use uh and that um does translate over well into falconry they are not as spirited or as fast as falcons or occipiters, but they are a bit more loyal and they are much more forgiving than either of those. One of the reasons why red tails uh, ended up in American falconry, when the first falconry laws were going into effect in the United States, and a new apprentice falconer could only have an, an American kestrel or a red-tailed hawk. And uh, that I believe those laws were most likely made that way because those species were both incredibly common. And so it, you're not pulling on the population or doing anything wrong by trapping a wild red tail. But because of this, you had multiple generations of Americans training and flying red-tailed hawks, mostly on rabbits and squirrels. It seems in the eastern and southern United States, many people in the very dense woodlands will hunt squirrels tree squirrels and they'll and, and red tails will crash through the trees and go after them chase them and have a high success rate uh cottontail rabbits are hunted everywhere here in the west we mostly hunt black-tailed jackrabbits if you're uh, in europe it's comparable to the blue hare it looks almost identical a bit more wiry but almost identical to the blue hare that's what we hunt red-tailed hawks with and many other budios like ferruginous hawks and and so forth they're Ability to chase and build up speed is not natural. An out of shape goshawk seems to still be able to just grab a rabbit. Uh, these bootios, you have to strength train them. What I usually do is I'll, I'll, I'll get a big ladder and I'll stand on top and I'll call my hawk up to the fist like 50 times. So they're flying straight up 
and get a reward. Straight up and get a reward. You do that to build the muscle, build the stamina. And you don't have to do that quite so much to the same level with an occipiter. But if they are in shape, and once you've correctly wetted them to whatever you're trying to hunt, like a jackrabbit, then they're incredible. I mentioned in my last video that a goshawk will hunt and hunt and hunt and hunt and hunt all day long, every day, and it seems like they never tire out. Budios have their limit. They, you know, some will take multiples, but a lot of them it's like, hey, I put in a day's worth of hunting, I caught a rabbit, I'm done. Don't, I don't really want to keep going. I did what I needed to do, why do I need to do more? That's fine, you just have to be aware of that. So the most important thing, again, this video is not the end all uh, intro to Budios or Buzzards, but it's to prepare you for a falconry exam and to help you understand. So again, remember the hallmarks of Rebudio broad everything, huge chest, strong, built like a Jeep, built like a truck, long wings, broad wings, long tail, but not too long, short, thick toes, most often found up in a tree or on a phone pole, just sitting there, <laughs> looking around, scanning the fields for rodents, and most often hunting rodents or some mammalian prey, like rabbits, or prairie dogs. That is what they're most often doing. I hope that this video gives you enough of a brief intro. If there's a point about Budios or Buzzards that I forgot to cover, ask me down in the comments down below and I'll go ahead and put it in there. And be watching for the third of these three videos, which will be the intro to understanding falcons in relation to occipiters and Budios. Thank you for watching my channel. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, happy hawking.